our session will be mainly live demo. Uh, Kuba show a big demo about AutoML code and no code free tools. Uh, why AutoML? AutoML is very important because I know uh, we are enthusiasts, uh, passionate, freak, uh, crazy people love algorithm, uh, love tuning, hyper parameters, etc., etc. But business looks different. For business has uh, business has data, and want solution, want result. B business want uh, return on of investment quickly. Yeah. For example, when we have uh, e-commerce corporation, e-commerce corporation has data from sales, data about uh, our customers, etc. Want create forecast. Forecast with uh, include weather, etc., etc. For me, it's time series. Yeah, I know algorithm Salima, Rima, LSTN, RNN, etc., etc. Uh, but for business, it's uh, very important quickly realize project, quick quick win. Yes, and this is point from business, not from research. And many uh, organization on the world create a solution for auto email because this is quick win for typical problem for business. Not specify, not original pro uh, problem, but typical problem. Yeah? And uh, this is Jakub Wawrzyniak, architect. I'm Łukasz Grala and CEO at TNDK and, T and, T &K, and a PhD student from University of Poznań, uh, uh, Poznań of University Technology. Uh, okay. No. Uh, the uh, the auto email problem is implemented many companies, for example Google, for for example Microsoft Research. We will tell uh, you about the solution from Microsoft Research. Microsoft Research is one of the largest scientific um, institute of the, of the world uh, and create many projects and many solutions for uh, science and business. Yeah? Uh, uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, Microsoft defini uh, defined uh, several challenges. These challenges beat solution end-to-end -end for uh, production, yes? From data, to read it to use, read it to production uh, model uh, for business. Uh, in AutoML, include three phases. First is transform feature, yes, because we have data and mass transfer feature. Next step is identify model and tune parameters. Uh, all phases is important, but uh, select the model is difficult and expensive, because we try uh, not think about uh, brute force method. Yeah, next next model, next model, next model, next model is not a good way. Uh, Microsoft public um, make many papers about AutoML. Uh, we will not talk about the detail because because we want to sh show in uh, it more practically. Okay. Free problem relies in auto ML. First is classification, second is regression, and next is time series. Yeah, auto ML is dedicated for this free class of problem. And Microsoft implement, implemented many algorithms. For example, for classification, uh, KN, knife bias, random forest, etc. For regression, many methods, and typical methods for Time series, for example, auto RIMA, forecast ECN, gradient boosting decision tree. Of course, it's very important and necessary measure to evaluate this algorithm. Uh, thinking Cuba show live uh, algorithm and talk about this measure. Uh, of course, methods, features, but very important is implemented in production uh, pr production environment, yeah? And Microsoft offer pipeline for this release. For example, one of these pipeline is uh, formerly known MLOps, yeah? 
and we are talking about pipeline in Azure Machine Learning, where we we have data and create model in, and imp implement, for example, in containers, etc. This is typical pipeline. Uh, pipeline uh, we can realize with uh, design uh, no code, uh, uh, node code environment, or with uh, use, uh, uh, for example, Python. And now show live show with Cuba. Okay, live show. Thank you, Lukas, for this uh, general introduction to AutoML. Uh, well, now I think you have uh, more or less a general overview of the uh, Microsoft uh, approach to automated machine learning, and let me show you uh, this solution live. Uh, okay, let me switch to, uh, to my Azure environment. Do you see? Yes. Okay, so to start our journey, okay. Just the resolution. Um, okay, let's try with this. So to start our journey with uh, automated machine learning with uh, Microsoft, uh, you'll have to create something called machine learning workspace. Uh, there are two types of workspaces. Uh, each of them is created through, uh, for example, uh, Microsoft Azure platform portal. Uh, so when I'm logged in, I can create such a workspace, and I did so uh, a few days ago. And now we're going to use it. Uh, as I said, there are two types of uh, workspaces, uh, standard and premium called enterprise. And the difference is that uh, in the standard workspace, we can use uh, very simple tools. And to use uh, automated ML, for example, on the, or the designer, when, where we can use uh, graphical user interface, uh, we need uh, this enterprise, enterprise uh, environment. Okay. Try with this. Okay, let me switch to this machine learning workspace. So now I will uh, launch the new Azure Machine Learning Studio to show you how this product uh, this product uh, looks. Let me sign in. Okay, one important remark. Please remember that this is still under the preview, and that means that. Uh, a lot of things works, but we shouldn't be surprised if there is some, if something happens unexpectedly. Yeah. So just to justify in case of something, uh, something happens. Okay, so this is uh, the general view of this uh, machine learning studio. We have uh, well, we we have uh, some um, important modules here. We can use notebooks to. Um, this is the code approach when we can use, for example, Python SDK to create, run, and, uh, uh, and evaluate uh, our models. Uh, the automated ML, which is the core of this, uh, of this um, approach, and the designer, which is a typical drag and drop interface. And I will try to show you all of them in this uh, short demo. Uh, Moreover, here you can see uh, some of the experiments uh, which I've done, uh, for example, yesterday or today, uh, my compute engines and uh, some links to tutorials. Okay, let's try with, uh, let's start with this uh, automated ML approach, which is completely no code. Uh, so what I have to do is to create a new experiment uh, through the creator by step by step and uh, to run the experiment and then I will have a bunch of models evaluated over one of the metrics which uh, Wuka has shown us on the slides. Okay, so I'm going to create new uh, automated ML run and for the first step I have to select my data set. I will rely on the data set uh, from the bank marketing, we will try to 
to do a classification task uh, to classify the um, credits or the, the customers to some, um, to some classes. So I, I'll, I will use this uh, bank marketing data set, but I will upload it, I upload it right now. Mm -hmm. Let me try. Sorry, the resolution is really poor. So I will, yeah. I will create a new data set from the local files. And there is a data set that I prepared for this task. Okay, it's CSV. Uh, with, okay, I can give it a um, more familiar name. Uh, this is a tabular type. And from the advanced settings. Uh, what is important? When I use my local file, it will, it will be up to, uh, uploaded to the uh, Azure storage. So the more typical storage is called Azure Blob storage. Uh, it's important for you to know that there are some parts where you're um, going to pay for it. Not much, but uh, a bit of money, so it's important. Yeah? When I use this Azure Blob storage, it's going to cost me around, I don't know, 50 cents per month or something like that. Okay, so I will upload this, and in the next view, I'll, uh, we should see the settings. Okay, so this is a delimited file format, a comma separated with the right encoding, all files, same he headers. We can skip some rows if necessary, but we won't do it right now. Okay, and in this step, we can. Uh, we can decide whether we want to use a given column or not. Uh, so, for example, we can uh, well, we can decide that we don't want the uh, I don't know the contact or the housing, something like that. Yeah, it's, if it's not important for us, so I can switch it off. Okay, there is a summary of this. I can confirm these details, and when I click Create, the file is uploaded to the other blob storage, and now I can use it in my experiment. So I will select this data set and go to the next step. Okay, now I'm, uh, I'm configuring my uh, run, my experiment, so I have to do some necessary things. And uh, okay, one more remark. If you have any question during the presentation, please interrupt me and I will try to explain a bit more if something is not clear for you. Okay, so for, for now I will, mm, name, I will create a name for my experiment, for example, something like that. The target column is the column uh, I will try to predict, yeah, that's the value, so I will use a column called Y, it's prepared in this data set. Um, now I have to select my compute target, and the compute target is a cluster of the uh, virtual machines I can use to train my model and to evaluate results. Uh, so if I don't have this uh, compute target, I have to create a new one. Well, I have this compute target, but I will show you how to create a new one. So I. I will click uh, create a new compute. I have to prepare a name for it, for example, ML Compute. And now I'll have to uh, select the size of the virtual machines that I'm going to use. Uh, there is a bunch of uh, machines that I can, uh, the configurations that I can select. Uh, the default one is uh, DS12 V2 with four uh, virtual CPUs and 28 uh, gigabytes of memory, and it's enough. Uh, but there is also a quota on each account. So I can't have more than, um, as I remember, 20 virtual CPUs uh, on my account. So when I um, <coughs> say you that I have this compute, I can't create uh, more compute, uh, compute engines because um, I'm gonna uh, be above this uh, limit. Yeah? So just to show you, uh, here you can create, here you can select the um, given virtual machine size, and here you can define how many nodes 
for minimum and maximum uh, maximum uh, workload uh, we're gonna use. Yeah. So this is um, important also from the point of the uh, auto scaling because this environment uh, scales in um, automatical way. So we don't have to uh, we don't have to worry about this. And for now, I will uh, use one of my compute targets, uh, which I prepared uh, earlier. So let's go to the next, okay. ML1 experiment. And let's go to the next step. Okay, in this step, I will have to select a task type. So as Lukas said, there are three typical tasks which we can solve with uh, automated machine learning. And the first one is classification, second one is regression, and the third one is time series forecasting. And right now we have a classification task, so I will select this classification. And, uh, well, as you can see, there is also a checkbox for enable deep learning. Still in preview, but uh, well, you'll be able to um, mark this uh, checkbox and enable uh, well much more efficient approach if you have a lot of um, volume of data to to process. Okay, some additional configuration uh, like uh, primary metric we're gonna use for this uh, for this experiment. Uh, as you can see, there are, as Wukash said, there are some uh, typical metrics which we can use, for example, accuracy or area under curve, weighted, and this is the one we are gonna use in this uh, experiment. Uh, some more settings, like automatic featureization. Uh, there are some additional steps that uh, automated ML can do for you uh, in the background, so you don't have to uh, worry about uh, some feature uh, things like normalization or something like that. So just to, by default it is uh, enabled, but yeah, you can decide to disable it if you don't want to use the, uh, this engine. If you're interested in more details, there's uh, of course, uh, uh, it's described in this uh, publication from Microsoft Research. Okay, and at the end we're gonna uh, require the explanation of our best model. Yeah, so we are going to uh, display some uh, some metrics, some some charts, and so on. Uh, what more? We can decide uh, whether we want to test, to train some, uh, to to use some algorithms or not. Uh, and again, there is a list of algorithms for each task which we can use or not. Uh, for now, we all going to leave this uh, with uh, all the algorithms, but. If, uh, if you want, you can, you can decide to not use any of this uh, list. Yeah? Some other things like uh, exit criteria, so we can decide that there is a, a hard uh, constraint on the training job time, just to not to, to go through the, for example, three hours, or um, there is a constraint on the metric score of threshold that we, we are gonna um, achieve and uh, okay, automated uh, validation, concurrency, maximum uh, concurrent iterations. Uh, what is important? Mm, this value needs to be at, um, at most the number of maximum um, of maximum nodes in our cluster. Okay, so for validation type, we can use, uh, for example, k-fold cross validation. And uh, okay, just for the time reason we could decide to use two cross validations and now I'm gonna save the settings um, okay about the featureization settings we can uh, also decide that when we use this automated uh, featureization uh, approach we can decide uh, that we're gonna include or exclude some columns from this from this uh, from this thing okay and now that's it. Let me click finish. And now my machine learning experiment is has started. 
task type is classification, we selected the metric, and now uh, we can observe live uh, what is going on. Yeah? So each model is trained one by one, and we can observe uh, when the task is finished, we can observe each, uh, each metric and go through the details. Uh, well, let's see if something, is, something happened yet, not yet. Preparing, so it's about to start. Just give it a moment. Okay, one more minute, let's refresh. Still preparing data, automatic featureization in the background, as I said before. Well, we don't have to keep this view. Yes? We, we can switch to and uh, do some other things and then go back to our experiment to show the results. And okay, let me show this what's going on. It's still preparing. Okay, it's still preparing, and let me show you the results of our, my previous experiment. And we'll go into, back to this in a few minutes. Uh, so AML1 is the same experiment I did uh, yesterday. So this is a complete experiment. So we've decided, uh, well, we've automated and decided which model is uh, the best model in case of uh, the selected metric, and here we can observe its, its uh, value. And, uh, well, the whole duration of the uh, experiment and task is completed. When I click on this uh, models tab, I can see all the algorithms. In terms of the selected metric and the duration of each step. And what now? I can go to the details of each step to visualize how the given algorithm performed, yeah? So, for example, I can observe precision recall chart. Uh, I can observe calibration curve, and then gain curve, and the uh, ROC, and uh, lift curve, and, for example, confusion matrix, yeah? So this is something we can uh, observe for each model in each step, and what more, there is an explanation tab, and uh, here we are gonna understand what, which features are uh, impacting the model and why. Yeah? So this is something which is done uh, also in the background after the experiment is completed. There's one warning that the large data sets can well, increase delay. As I said, preview. we should see something. Let me rely on the raw data. Okay, just a moment and I hope we'll see something. Um, Do you have any questions for now, maybe? How does it compare to the data science? Like, if I had data science work, how does it work for the data science? Would it make it on average better than the results than the other one? Can you repeat this question? Because I... How does it compare to AutoML? Uh, how, how does it compare to data scientists? So if I had a data scientist for who, for example, worked on this project for, let's say, let's say some variance, like a day or mm -hmm. a week, uh, would he, on average, achieve better results, worse results, the same results? How would, it, with, how would it look like? I mean, I know it's not like a pre very precise question, but I guess that there were this sort of experiments conducted? Yeah, but the, well, the question, the, the answer is uh, 
a bit complicated because uh, I can't tell you better results or worse results, but uh, uh, he or she can achieve these results uh, much faster. And this is the, from the business point of view, this is the, uh, this is the one of the most important things. Yeah? So we can, we don't have to do the repeatable things with the, for example, futurization and testing the same algorithms, the same models, the same approaches. So we can use some kind of automated environment to test this uh, against, um, against our data set. But we know that in most projects, like the modeling part is the shortest. It's not, it's not the, most, uh, the most resource, uh, resource intensive uh, yeah. task. So if, like, if I can cut this 15%, of my workload, then it's not that much. So is it like, can we say that there's a lot of gain from using AutoML other than this, uh, skipping this modeling part, which as I say, is often not the, the most resource intensive? Mm, well, I think no one can promise that. <laughs> No one can promise that, but uh, we will have to answer in terms of many, many things. Yeah, so we can we can continue this discussion. I think after this session, because there are many, many things that we have to take into account. So if you are interested, we can we can talk after the session. Uh, just to show you the explanation uh, is shown, and uh, we can see that for this uh, for this uh, model, the one of the most important feature was the duration time, yeah? duration and number of employed. Can I have a question? Yes. Uh, so about the features, because let's say in most cases, EDA is really important part of the um, building the solution. So what about your data that you put? Uh, it's uh, original data or you made, and re often you are doing some uh, EDA before putting this data to the AutoML uh, algorithms? Well, we, uh, with, uh, for now, I've put the original data. The original data, and uh, did all the auto-futurization things on the AutoML environment. Okay, so, so here you are showing us that the top key features, yeah. and that's the original features, or that the features built by the AutoML? So these are the original features, because I've switched to the raw uh, data set. So these are the original features, and I can observe also the features built by AutoML when I switch to this uh, second explanation with classification. Yeah? And from, from your experience, you mostly do the EDA before putting data there, or no? Well, it depends. It depends because when we are using the Azure environment and uh, all the computing uh, behind the scenes, uh, we do it uh, on the one platform. So we, we, we just put the raw data and do it uh, with AutoML. Okay, so it's also that efficient, uh, that efficient like uh, data scientists? Yeah. About, okay, thank you. Okay, let's see if uh, our experiment already started, just to show you that it works. Yeah, it's running, yeah? as you can see. And, uh, well, this is uh, going to take uh, some time, but uh, during the running, we can observe, as I said, some algorithms, some, some metrics. And Excuse me? Yes? Uh, is it possible to run this in a local environment, let's say in my own cluster? Uh, well, yes, we, uh, there is an, also a library called AutoML, Azure AutoML, so we, you can um, use this approach on your local cluster. But I mean not develop locally the code for that to connect to a, a cloud runner, but to set all of this up locally to, let's say I have enough resources on my own to, I have a cluster, like whatever resources I need, and can I run this locally? No. Because, no. for example, my data is proprietary and I cannot share it with Microsoft? Mm, no, from my knowledge, no. Okay, so this is uh, more or less the approach uh, that relies on the graphical user interface. And uh, let me show you quickly uh, what we can do with the code approach. We have uh, a question. Excuse me. Uh, there is a question about running locally, and there is thing uh, called AutoKeras that is open source and can be 
run locally. So, mm -hmm. well, how do you think this AutoML compares to AutoKeras? Uh, yeah, uh, there are some leverages in the Azure Machine Learning uh, AutoML, uh, which we are going to discuss uh, a bit later. Uh, but just to mention, for example, an ease of deployment. So you can automatically, automatically deploy the best model using, for example, Kubernetes uh, cluster or um, Azure Container Services. Uh, I will show it to you. And uh, of course, the futurization. Yeah. So this is this is the the main difference, I think. So for example, uh, we have e-commerce and have ten thousand products, and uh, one product, one predict, one forecast, yeah. and uh, create pipeline which generate ten thousand forecast for this product. Yeah. This is big solution where we create pipeline from data to end product in production. Yes? It's not the same which research, specified, original, very good uh, model for one problem. This is for scale problem in business. Yeah? What do we mean? This is a, a bit a different approach. This is a, like a shift in, uh, in thinking about uh, machine learning in terms of business. Yeah? So, of course, this may be not the more efficient, more sophisticated environment for scientists uh, in general. Yeah? But when we are taking into account such uh, business things like uh, Roy mentioned by uh, Ukash, it is, uh, it is important to be flexible and fast. And this is something that automated uh, ML uh, gives to you. Uh, when I mention uh, uh, deployment, uh, let me show you. I've just uh, selected uh, the run from uh, yesterday for this experiment. And uh, what we can see here is that, uh, as I said before, the best model was selected. And right now we can deploy this best model with just a few clicks. Yeah? So I can click to deploy this model. I can name my deployment. And now I will have to select the compute type. The default one is Azure Kubernetes Services, so I'll have to uh, prepare uh, earlier my Kubernetes service, or I can select ACI, and ACI is Azure Container Instances, so I can use it and uh, deploy my uh, model automatically. And right now I'm clicking Deploy, and in the, backgr in the background, uh, the whole, say, magic is going to happen. And in the few minutes, we will be able to observe our endpoint, which we can uh, request just like the typical uh, REST API to retrieve uh, the uh, result of our, uh, of our model. Okay. I have two more questions. First question is, um, can you deploy it locally at least? <laughs> or everything has to be done in the cloud? You can download your best model. And what's the, okay, so if you, but can you deploy it on your own? From this environment? Yes, well, you can, uh, you can uh, download your model and deploy it on your own. All right, and wh what's the format? Uh, it's uh, PKL. Okay. Yeah. Right. And the second question would be, can I, uh, let's say there is a given um, amount of the algorithms that Microsoft has implemented here. Let's say I have a bleeding edge architecture that I want to uh, include in my AutoML process. So can I create my own model? Yes, uh, like you can. My own algorithm? And yes, you can. So there is, um, that's something I'm going to show you right now from the code point of view. Uh, but yes, here are the assets just like models, where you can register a model, uh, which you can, for example, upload here, yeah? I, I don't mean my own model, I mean my own algorithm. So like, okay. when I'm doing training... So your own algorithm, uh, for now, I don't think it's possible. There is a, there is a closed set of uh, algorithms. 
Or at least you can, yes, at least you can use the code version with... Uh, so just to show you, uh, we'll go to the notebooks where I created some experiments. For example, uh, here we are going to have a regression task. Okay, sorry for the resolution, I don't know what to... Yeah, maybe something like that. Okay, so here are the notebooks environment. It's uh, a bit similar to, for example, Jupyter, but if you're not familiar with such simple notebooks, you can always switch to the Jupyter environment, and there is, you know, there is the switch. So we, so we can click on Jupyter and open it in Jupyter on Jupyter Lab. Yeah? So if we are familiar with the Jupyter environment, you can also use the Jupyter here. Uh, but as I said, these are the typical, typical notebooks. Okay, so here we have a regression experiment where we use this uh, uh, AutoML library and we use the Auto, uh, Azure ML open data sets, some typical data sets like, for example, this with New York, New York Taxi. Uh, so where are we going to predict uh, uh, taxi fare? Yeah? Uh, just to simplify things, I've limited this uh, to their three months in terms of time because we are running out of time a bit. So uh, we use this uh, three months to, uh, to create our data set. Yeah, then uh, here is the brief overview of our data set. And uh, what we can do, we can build a, we've built a, here a time feature based on the uh, LP pickup date time. So we've just extracted this to day, weekday, hour, and so on. And then there is a, uh, there is a new data set. Uh, we've removed the uh, non-used uh, columns. Uh, so we've just limited it to the, uh, the most important ones. Uh, we can, of course, use some description of our data set to, uh, to observe the mean, standard deviation, minimum and quartiles, and maximum values. Uh, well, then we've uh, decided to uh, limit this to only to the, uh, this is New York City, so we've limited this to the Manhattan area in terms of the latitude and longitude. And uh, if you're interested, I can uh, share these uh, notebooks with you after the session. Yeah? Uh, just, just to know. And right now, we've, uh, there is a magic behind the automated ML. We've uh, connected to the workspace. So we're going to have the workspace. We've uh, connect, connected to the workspace. We've used some uh, settings from the Azure environment. Yeah, we've selected that this is the, this workspace we're going to use for this experiment. And uh, right now we've uh, split the uh, data set, the training data set, um, and test data set. And here, here are the settings, uh, which I've previously selected from the graphical user interface. So I've uh, defined the iteration timeout and uh, experiment timeout minutes. Uh, the primary metric for this, I've selected Spearman correlation, and uh, I've also defined that I'm going to use this auto featureization. And uh, well, I'm logging all the information from the, just for the development point of view, and uh, we've uh, used uh, five cross validations here. And right now, with this configuration, I've created a task for regression. And, uh, well, I've just uh, pointed the, uh, the values for X and for, for, for Y. And for, I've just run the experiment. And this is something uh, what is uh, going on behind the scenes. Yeah? So, so this is something what we can observe from graphical point of view, some, from graphical user interface, and also from the, uh, from the notebook itself. Yeah? So we can observe that... Uh, 
there is some auto-featurization, like missing values imputation that is passed, high cardinality feature detection that's passed, and so on. And each iteration with the duration time metric and the best metric for this, uh, for this given step. Yeah? So after the end of this experiment, we can, uh, we can confirm that the run is completed, and we can observe the, uh, the, best, uh, the best model, and we can use it to predict, uh, to predict some values. Yeah? And if you're interested, after this uh, code approach, you can also go to the automated ML runs and observe it in the graphical interface. Yeah? So this is, uh, this is more, uh, how to say it, clear for, uh, for the persons uh, to use uh, this uh, environment. Okay, and uh, about the pipelines, uh, the machine learning pipelines that uh, Lukas mentioned before, we can create a, such a pipeline for the whole process of training and featurization and so on, and uh, to the deployment. We can create it from the graphical interface, so we can use the pipelines assets and create new pipeline, where we can just, you know, take this, connect with uh, another block and and so on and so on. But you can also define these pipelines from, uh, from uh, the code. Yeah? So the library uh, consists all of the methods necessary to do so. So let me show you one of the pipelines and create it uh, with the code version. For example, we have this for the batch scoring. This is the run. And this is something I did in the code version, and I trained it and run it, and I could deploy it to the container. And about the deployment, just one more thing to the end. This is my deployment, so from the endpoints. We'll be able to see, yeah, deployment state is healthy, and this is our REST endpoint, which we can use to uh, well, which we can use in our applications. Okay, and I think that's all. Thank you. If you have any questions, just let us know.